drop step, heads toward goal. This game just keeps getting better and better and better. Stolen back by Lockhart, kept it low, drills it. Awesome. Inside Melbourne on the back of what was a, a really great win for the D's against Fremantle at the MCG. Clint Stanaway with you, Jack Viney alongside me. Jack, I thought you did a sterling job in the host chair last week. Thank you, thank you. I was under a bit uh, under the pump. They were uh, um, sending some digs my way, but felt like I... Uh, Mate, it's easy to shine with those two buff heads um, alongside you. I thought they were terrible, Yeah, but I th- thought you really shone. There was no real direction with the conversation. It was all over the shop. Um, I tried to steer the ship, but when you've got two big egos, um, like those two in the room, it's hard to uh, get them under control. Angus Brayshaw, Max Gorn, of course, who hosted during player takeover round. I just thought they steered the conversation always towards themselves. 100%, and I think... It's really disappointing. Um, yeah, I mean, and that's the general gist of it around the locker rooms as well as those two players are always just thinking about themselves, um, talking about themselves, and um, yeah, I'm fed up with it, to be honest. So am I. Well, thankfully, we've got two, uh, two strapping young lads in. The next gen episode, do you want to introduce our, our guests? Absolutely. They're a bit nervous as well. They are on. a bit edgy, they aren't they? To me just I like camera, it. I and, and they're saying... Fines, can you look after me on the podcast? We're a bit nervous. Um, so that is Tom Sparrow and uh, Jay Lockhart. So welcome, fellas. Thanks for having us. Thank you. How are you feeling, boys? Are you nervous? I mean, it's a big it's a big deal, a big occasion for you. Jay, we'll start with you. Yeah, obviously stepping up to the plate and finally got a call up, but no, I think I'm uh, nice and casual as you go. <laughs> have you been waiting for it, have you? I have. Just waiting for the phone to ring? I have seen uh, Bakesy got a call up the other week. <laughs> I'm shattered that I didn't get one first, but now <laughs> I'm here now. <laughs> Tommy, what about you, mate? Uh, yeah, well, speaking of Jack, just before he said you just talk a bit of smack, so. <laughs> <laughs> Now you two are you two are pretty tight, pretty good mates. Uh, you know, you've taken Tom under your wing, Jack. Yeah, I guess so. I guess so. We've uh, we've bonded bonded pretty well since uh, Tommy's arrived at the footy club. Um, similar uh, similar maturity levels, I think. <laughs> so we uh, we get along alright. How are you enjoying it? I'll start with you, Tom. How are you enjoying your first year? Uh, yeah, I've loved it. It's pretty good. Um, yeah, I spent the first week I was at the club with Gorney. Oh, yeah, yeah. Joint, so, yeah, it was good. It was uh, really Just give good. us an insight into that. So you, you walk into a footy club and they go, you're with Max Gorn. Yeah, well, I've, Shannon Burns came to my house just before I flew over and yeah. said, uh, you'll be living with Max yeah. when you get over there. So it's I a frightening prospect. Um, and he was in the just in the admin area. Um, and yeah, he was sort of just waiting to pick me up, take me back, take me back to his place. But um, yeah, he was really good. Um, him and his partner Jess, she's really nice. So um, yeah, they gave me a nice home for the week and uh, yeah, showed me around a bit, a bit, bit, bit of Melbourne. But um, other than that, um, yeah, he's a really good role model. So yeah, had a fun in his place. He's really batting above his average, isn't he, Max? Max Jess is lovely. Jess is really lovely. Yeah. I don't really want to say too much. <laughs> 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 what about yourself, Jay? Uh, big year for you too. I mean, last player added to Melbourne's list and here you are shining on the big stage at the MCG. You must be enjoying your footy right now. Yeah, it's been obviously very enjoyable last few months. Um, it all happened pretty quick, but once I kind of got settled in, the, um, knowing the boys coming in helped as well. So um, I didn't have to learn everything from scratch and guys from scratch, so... Um, oh, I've loved every minute of it. Obviously, working full time as a builder and stuff like that for five years, and then get to be a AFL player, it's been unreal. It's an easy gig, isn't it, Jay? Compared yeah. to compared to being a builder, it's an easy gig. Nah, it's not an easy. <laughs> 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 well, a few early mornings More in this enjoyable. job too. Hey, um, so just take us back. Tell us about how it all came came to pass. Because as I mentioned, you were the last player added to the to the list. Um, Apart this from Carl Dunkley. Yep. Oh, well, Dunks. yeah, of course, mid, mid-season. He doesn't count, though. He, do, he does now. <laughs> yeah, it's a good point. It is a good point. Uh, the second last player added to the list. <laughs> I mean, how does it all come about? And when did you get the call? And you must have been chuffed. Yeah, obviously missing out on the November draft, just the nor- like the normal draft coming in was pretty shattering, but was ready just to you know get back to Casey and work hard to try and get on a list. and. Um, obviously knew the cutoff date was March 15th, which was the Friday of, of that week. And um, yeah, I was pretty nervous all week, to be honest. So I was texting my manager and trying to get a word into Melbourne. And um, yeah, only come about Thursday morning, really. My manager told me that it probably wasn't still going to happen. And then Thursday afternoon, he sent me a s- sneaky text. And 
A um, couple of, about an hour later, Goody rang me and said I was going to be on the list, and yeah, I was, you know, pretty gobsmacked for the first time in my life, to be honest. So, um, <laughs> yeah, we had Casey. The training was out at Casey, and I was already doing that session through Casey, and then got introduced as a Melbourne player. It was pretty exciting. And had some game at the weekend. One of my uh, very good friends, Nick Carr, he's a big fan of yours. He tweeted, um, here's something not many people are talking about. 432 metres gained, seven intercept possessions, four, five score involvements, eight inside 50s, 21 disposals, two goals. It's a pretty good effort at the MCG at the weekend. Just take us back. Did you enjoy it? Yeah, it was um, very enjoyable. I think... Uh, over the break, we went to a new level with togetherness and obviously still building on that, but it just felt like um, we were a lot more involved with each other and we were just playing a, a team game. That was um, in the front of everyone's mind, just to play a team game. We got the result off the back of that. Tommy, um, you've all already debuted for the footy club, of yep. course. What about that moment for you? You must have enjoyed that too. Yeah, that was uh, it was pretty special. I didn't, didn't really know till 24 hours beforehand because... Jordy Lewis pulled out late, so um, yeah, I'd play round one, and then sort of had to tell everyone, all my parents, all parents, all my friends, um, sort of if you can get over, get over. But if you can't make it, that's all right. It's a bit late notice, so um, it was actually good. I didn't really have to, I didn't really have time to be nervous about it because it was just probably it was the next day. So, um, but yeah, that was a good experience. I was pretty happy just to settle the nerves early with the goal in the first quarter, but. Um, yeah, other than that, it was really enjoyable. Um, yeah, and hopefully I can uh, hope get a few more games to come, but yeah, just sitting on the sidelines for a while now, but yeah. You been impressed with uh, what you've seen from both of these two lads, Jack? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, like we've spoken about, you know, Jay, you know, literally rocked up to just a main training, a normal day. Um, and, you know, we had some of the Casey boys there to help with the session and join in. And uh, Goodies just says, boys, we add another one, un, in another one to the list. Welcome, Jay Locker. And it was just the biggest surprise. Um, you know, for that moment, he's training as a Melbourne player. Uh, and then he's playing, um, you know, he's debuting not, not long after that. So I'm sure it was a bit of a whirlwind for him at the time. Um, but then to play consistent AFL football like he has and obviously the performance on the weekend, I think, so uh, it's, you know, it's, it's hard enough to just, play AFL football but in the circumstance Jay's done it in I think it's pretty incredible um, and Tommy similar thing you know first year player coming in having an immediate impact to debut round one um, I think some massive credit to him how he's going to be his footy but um, you know one of the lessons he's, he's learnt which is good I think good early in the career is about injuries and rehab and uh, he's obviously had a setback with his knee um, which is really you know keep him out for, for a fair chunk of time but um, he's handling it really well. So Jay, back to you, you were um, kicking around in Tassie, you're from Tassie, is that right? Just tell yep. us a bit about the, the backstory. Yeah, so I grew up in a little country town, um, only about half an hour out of Launceston but for us half an hour driving is <laughs> not ideal back there so um, yeah, I just played junior footy out there, uh, my old man was a senior coach and things like that and then reserves coach so I just played under 16s from about 12 because that's what we ha all we had um, and then I moved into Launceston at 15 played a bit of juniors on Sundays through them as well but yeah went to the state league at 16 and um, yeah played seniors there for five years so um, we had a we played I think my last three years we played in the grand final and won two there um, and yeah so I just played there with a lot of my mates growing up we all moved into Launceston to play footy there and Played a bit of under-18 Tassie footy as well. and um, yeah. When you're waiting for a call or from an AFL club, I mean, it must be just a, a frustrating sort of a wait, just, just plying your, your time waiting for that call. I mean, what, was it frustrating waiting? Uh, yes and no. It was obviously when you don't get it that day and you're waiting for it the next day, you're just getting more nervous. Yeah. That's, that's what I felt anyway, just realising they haven't called today, are they going to call tomorrow? So it was just, mm. it was just nerves and then... After the next couple of years, I just I understood that's just how it worked. Um, you're either going to get a call or you're not. Mm. So um, you couldn't dwell, dwell on it too much. You just had to keep working hard until you got it. Tom, what about you? Your backstory? Fill us in if you can. Uh, yeah, so I'm an Adelaide boy. So uh, Prince Alfred College. Yeah, Prince Alfred College. Represent. Yeah, <laughs> played a bit of school footy there. So um, yeah, I grew up in Adelaide, uh, just in the Adelaide Hills all my life pretty much. Uh, we moved around a fair bit in the last couple of years, but 
uh, finally settled back down now. And then, yeah, so I grew up playing soccer till I was 11, um, till I moved schools and everyone played footy at the, my new school, so I decided I'd join in. Um, yeah, and ever since then, I've just played for Bridgewater, just the local team, dad played there as well. So um, yeah, just progressed through the ranks and um, yeah, just was lucky enough to find myself in AFL list now. So um, yeah, that's pretty much pretty much me. So. You're, uh, you're a bit of a you know bull with how you play footy, aggressive at contest. How did you go playing soccer? Were you like that as a young age? <laughs> I, I was actually, I was a winger in soccer. I played on the wing, left wing. Um, but I, I just really liked the physical side of footy. Like just playing with my mates at school, I just really liked the tackling side of it. So I think that's probably the main reason why I switched over just because soccer, you can't really use your size too much. Um, but yeah, I don't know, I wasn't, I wasn't too good at soccer, so I thought I'd just try something else out. So. <laughs> and you met, um, Jay, you mentioned the building and all that. Did I read somewhere you were working shipping containers, something like that? Was that just last year, was it? Yeah, just last year. So I actually worked with uh, at Plappy's Business yep. uh, Food for Health, shout out. Uh, <laughs> so I worked there just a couple of days a week, doing a few orders, and then I, a mate was already over here, um, just unpacking shipping containers on the, like over at Lavelton now, Toner, just for like reject shop and... Um, yeah, companies like that, just as contractors, so just unpacking them and early mornings and get out early and get ready for VFL training. Good stuff. Uh, Jack, take us back to the weekend if you can. Um, you had quite a day out yourself. Um, you must have been pleased. Yeah, it was a good win. Um, you know, like the boys touched on before, we uh, we had a bit of soul searching to do over the bye. Um, you know, we obviously put some, some things in place led by the coaching group. Um, so I think the playing group rocked up this week really, uh, you know, enthusiastic and uh, optimistic about our second half of the season and uh, we had a really strong week and came to the game really uh, enthusiastic to, to perform. So, um, you know, Jay mentioned it before, um, you know, it was, it was one of the better team games we've played all year. Whilst we didn't get it on our terms, um, you know, early, we, we fought and, and grinded for the win and um, I thought it was, uh, you know, really, really strong performance from the group. Ran around with half a jumper for a little bit of match. <laughs> what happened there? Uh, just wanted to get the rig out. Bit of carry on. <laughs> Tommy reckons. <laughs> <laughs> just a bit of me time. Um, <laughs> try and start a biff so I get the shirt ripped off me. But no, nah, I was just, uh, you know, some tempers flaring out there in a close contest. And uh, I, know I, said, I said three or four Frio players pounce on me and... <laughs> It's like they were just trying to rip my shirt off. <laughs> um, so, and then I would try to come off after it was ripped because I was like, I can't play with this. And they say, no, you got to stay on, you got to stay on. So I was like, uh, well, I can't play with this. So I had to ditch it, um, <laughs> which I, I don't know what the rules are around that, but I've, I wouldn't have been able to do much with it. Just get the rig out. As it as was. So, uh Thankfully, I took it off, and then they they the goal. So I, I got turned around, picked it up, and we swapped it over pretty soon. But it could have been interesting if I didn't if they didn't kick the goal and I was playing with no shirt for five minutes or, or so. But I think a certain it didn't. I did see one stage a certain docker um, ran at you, and you didn't really catch it because it was sort of it might have been in your periphery, but you still managed to flatten him. Yeah. Oh, I, I saw it coming actually. <laughs> I, <laughs> Uh, I was I was pretending like I didn't see it coming, and then last minute I kind of braced for it. Um, so I think that kind of uh, got I him off it. got him off guard a bit. But uh, yeah, like I said, we were just uh, there were yeah, there was some you know tempers flaring and there was the heat of the battle and competitive well, it was people. Important, it was an important stage of the match. I mean, things yeah. really, things really turned our way. Yeah, and I mean, Walt, you know, Walters Walters is. Uh, is almost one of the informed players mm. of the competition. So, um, you know, I, I had a role out there to try and um, play on him when I, when I could and, um, yeah, just, you know, end up having a few words and a bit argy-bargy and one thing leads to another. So just kind of how it panned out. And, Jay, things really clicked for Tom McDonald as well. Were you happy to see him uh, in decent form in the second half? Yeah, for sure. He obviously hasn't lost his talent overnight or anything like that. So just that confidence and, um, you know, even just taking marks very late in the game was unbelievable for us. He worked right up the ground. He really led team first act. So uh, it was really good to see him clunk, clunk some and kick some goals. Head to Brisbane on the road 
uh, this week. I mean, the the reset um, during the buy round. How important was that for you, for you boys? Just to just to sort of take a deep breath, take stock, and as I say, mm. reset. Well, it's so full on during the season. Like mm. you, um, you know, you, week after week, you you know you perform, and then you've only got a certain amount of time to kind of review it before you then have to move on to the next week. So there's not a whole lot of time to really sit back, reflect. Um, you know, where are where are RFIs? Um, you know, what are we doing well? So I think the buy is just a good opportunity where we we can all sit back a little bit and just uh, yeah reflect on on what what we can do to get better and um, like I said I think the coaches led the way in that regard um, and then yeah players followed suit so I think the buy you know not only is it a physical rest it's a mental rest but it's also an opportunity just to just to catch our breaths and uh, reflect and see see where we're heading. Hey Jay Tom we've got some really searching questions from the outer <laughs> which we're going to get to with thanks to Zurich after the break but um, if you weren't feeling nervous you should be feeling nervous now. I've had a bit of a squeeze, Jack, and there's some good ones. Yeah, I'm having a And I know you've got a few I'm, as well. Yeah, I've got some ready to, ready to go. All right, that's coming up here on Inside Melbourne. Thanks to our co-major partner and podcast sponsor, Zurich. For over 100 years, they've been ensuring the people and the things you truly love. And just like you, they truly love footy and they truly love Melbourne. All right, welcome back. It's Inside Melbourne. Thanks to our partners, Zurich. Um, Joined here by two very special guests. Um, Strapping young lads. Very handsome men. Uh, Jay Lockhart <laughs> and uh, Tom Sparrow. And to lead off with the questions um, from Will here. So I think you boys got a bit of a man crush um, out there. But how are you so sexy? I think that's directed to both of you. Both. I reckon it's Tom. Uh, Tom. No, it's both roosters. I'm looking at the sheet and it says Lockhart. So... <laughs> Well, I don't know, mate. <laughs> Hard work. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of time in the gym. A lot of time in the mirror. <laughs> okay. Good, good start. <laughs> it doesn't happen overnight, does it? It's something you're obviously born with good genes, uh, Jay. Just embrace it, mate. Yeah. Well. Jay, let's, let's continue the theme because there is another question for you, Jay. Right off the top here, what's it like having the best pipes in the club slash comp? I, uh, Compliments are coming thick and fast. My partner was actually looking at uh, these, these comments on Instagram and Facebook and she didn't mention that one. And in real life, <laughs> they're not much chop, so I don't know what the camera adds, 10 pounds or whatever it is. So oh, it it Trust might, me, it does, yeah. It might just be that. I don't have the biggest arms, so there you go. What else we got there, Vines? <laughs> Here you go, from Mitch. Do you get itchy from the grass, Tom? <laughs> Uh, sometimes you do actually, especially when you're real hot, and sweaty. Um, when it's when it's a bit wet and cold, you don't really get too itchy. But um, yeah, most of the time you don't really notice you get too much adrenaline pumping. But yeah, um, yeah. So the, d- the G, the, like the AFL standard oval, is pretty good. Yeah, yeah it's mainly it's just like last year's sample sort of stuff. You get it a little bit. Yeah. Sometimes, but yeah, I haven't really noticed it. You don't really take notice, do you? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> up, at, up at Marucci, when we go train Marucci to all that, that yeah. grass is itchy. Whenever we we're always, the doc will, or the <laughs> ta- person will take the warm up, say, you know, guys down on their back for some back rolls, and we all kind of get yeah, down there cool. cringing because we know we're going to end up with itchy backs. But <laughs> there you go. <laughs> the uh, pitfalls of being playing AFL footy. Hey, Tom, I know that you've already answered this. Who was the most welcoming when you arrived at the club? Jay, I'm intrigued to hear your answer. This is from uh, Ella. Yeah, well, probably just being um, near each other in the lockers, probably Neville Jetta to start with. He, um, you know, we had a little bit to do with each other last year just by helping us out his backs. and um, Yeah, he was pretty welcoming straight up. Um, you know, showed me a few a few things you know, early on. So it was, um, yeah, I'd say Nev. Brittany tells us it's more of a statement. Oh, it's, it's a question. How does it feel knowing fans have your number on their jumper because you're inspiring and exciting to watch play football? That must be, get a bit of a kick out of that. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I think uh, Jade Rawlings' daughters were the first to get my number <laughs> on their Guernseys. They got their new Guernseys as soon as I got signed and they put 41 on the back, so that was pretty cool to see. And um, Yeah, I've obviously seen a few and um, yeah, it's pretty special. Do you still have to pinch yourself? Like knowing that you're running out playing AFL footy for the oldest football club in the land? Yeah, I think the last couple of weeks or the last couple of games that I've played, I've tried to, you know, kind of forget about 
that part of it and just go out there and play. So, but for the first five or six weeks, I was like, as we're running out through the banner and looking up at everyone mm-hmm. in the crowd, and yeah, it was you know a bit of a whirlwind still. So I've just tried to tone it back a bit and just play. I take it you still get those moments through your career. You would have felt it last September as well. It's, yeah, it, I mean, it, it must. You still must get a, a buzz from it, Jack. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, you know, it's for for what you know. We've, this is all we've wanted to do for mm. since we were four or five years old. For Tommy, it was twelve years old. But um, <laughs> post soccer, you know, <laughs> we get to we get to run out and play football for for a living and. Um, you know, play at some of the stadiums we get to play at, and um, you know, have the kind of influence we do on on the public and on fans. It's something um, you know we we don't take for granted for for sure. But I think you raise a really good point, Jay. It's um, you know, if you get if you get too caught up in that that stuff, it can affect your mm. performance. So you you do have to um, you do have to tone it down at times, and um, remember, you know, it's it's all about the decisions game day that. Um, get the performance done, but when you do get the opportunity to sit back and reflect and um, look at it, definitely we go take it in. Hey Tom, do you still fancy your skills with the soccer ball? Uh, somewhat here and there. I'm probably not the most skillful player, but uh, yeah, I don't mind. I can juggle a, juggle a soccer ball, not too bad. Do a few tricks, but can you do the around the world. I can do the around the world. Um, don't really get too much opportunity. It's not too many soccer balls laying around here. You bring them out and track and like warm ups every now and then. Yeah, the soccer balls come out. Yeah, it's actually it's good to play a bit of soccer during the warm up. I actually enjoy that a fair bit. But um, EPL team, who do you like? I don't support or really follow <laughs> anyone. Um, Glad not, I asked. not a massive sport. <laughs> not a massive sport head actually. To be honest. Um, yeah, no, I don't really follow too many other sports besides footy. What do you do in your spare time then? In my spare time. Uh, First, you just do a sports ready course uh, that we do every Tuesday, which is. Uh, we well, do that for an hour. Yeah, well, I'm just, what else just you finding do? my feet this first year. So, um, what else do I do? Just do a, lot of, do a bit of sleeping. Um, <laughs> get pretty exhausted here and there. Just, it's mentally draining. So, um, don't mind. I know the other boys as well. Just jump on the PlayStation. So, that seems to be a pretty common thing. Have you um, found yourself a lovely lady yet? Oh, in, here, um, here are the searching <laughs> questions. Been waiting for it. Uh, no, I haven't. You haven't? No, nah, I don't know any people in Melbourne besides the boys in the footy club. So, um, yeah, haven't really gotten around yet. You're right. Well, Tom, haven't well, hit the town yet and tried found, your luck. I haven't found myself a lovely lady, Jack, no. Okay. <laughs> We're here to help. I'm sure there's some ladies out there who uh, who would fancy their, uh, fancy their luck. No? Don't know. <laughs> he's hit him up on uh, Instagram DMs and <laughs> slide into his DMs. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, we digress a little bit. Uh, one for both of you. Uh, who did you barrack for before Melbourne? Jay? Yeah, I was uh, Collingwood, the whole family were Collingwood, so it's I jumped on board. Yep. Tarrant, Chris Tarrant, he was my man. Are they. They've all sort of also has good pipes. Yeah, so good good pipes. Yeah, exactly. That was the inspiration. <laughs> yeah, it probably was. <laughs> um, well, obviously Queen's birthday game. My Ooh. sister had Melbourne scarf and a Collingwood scarf. It's obviously, when Melbourne were losing, she put the <laughs> Melbourne scarf away. My badge went on the Collingwood scarf, and I don't know what my old man was doing. To be honest, he was probably Collingwood still. <laughs> Since I wasn't playing, I'm not sure. <laughs> Tom, what about you, man? Uh, I was an Adelaide boy. So I just went for Crows just um, because I lived there, but wasn't really too into it. And I sort of wouldn't really get around to the games too often, but if they were playing Friday, Saturday night, I'd tune in. So. Do Crows and Power supporters hate each other? Like, is there a genuine uh, rivalry? Not uh, not really, I wouldn't say, unless they're at the footy. Um, hmm. But other than that, you wouldn't really be able to tell. But I know at school there was a few, you had a few uh, arguments about who was better. Um, but I heard that other than that, it's not I heard too that bad. Power fans are more feral than Adelaide They're fans. More, I don't know. It's, yeah, I didn't. A few less teeth and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It's, no, they're pretty loyal supporters, actually. It's pretty, you see a poor home game, there's 50,000 people there. So they're oh, they're loyal, loyal but they're supporters. apparently bogans. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, it's pretty rich coming from uh, a Melbourne supporter who, know, who takes it? cheese platters to the footy games. <laughs> Uh, what's been the toughest part of your AFL journey? Start with you, Tom. 
Um, what's been the toughest part? Probably, probably settling in and moving over here. Mm. I think would be the hardest. Um, just, just because coming out of school first year, um, and then moved to interstate was pretty difficult. Um, obviously, I had some really good people like Gorney helped me first for the first week. Um, then I was in a share house for a bit with the other draftees. So you sort of learned to cook and mm. do a bit of washing and stuff like that. What's the current setup? Where where are you living? Uh, are you living I live with? in Brighton with a host family now. Brighton. So Brighton. <laughs> Melbourne. <laughs> yeah. So that's probably been the hardest part. Just sort of learning the ropes and a new city. You don't really know where anything is. Um, it's a little bit hard to get around. Yeah. Drive. You don't really know where to go and stuff like that. But that's right now. It's just I've sorted that out and it's yeah, it's going really well. So. Jay. Yeah, it's probably just the disappointment we've had over the first half of the year with losses and not getting wins on the board. Just we obviously don't want to lose, and um, you know, seeing guys so upset and disappointed after any type of loss, that's probably just been the hardest part of you know you got to move on straight away. You can't go to work and forget about it for a day. You you come back in here and it's footy again. You got to get on with the job. So yeah, just the disappointment of um, yeah, probably the first half of the year with the losses but it's been very enjoyable at the same time i got a good one here I think I would find interesting and I know Luke would as well because he submitted the question uh, did you find it difficult finding a pathway to the AFL in Tasmania yeah well there's a clear pathway there it's probably only one pathway to get there is through the under 18s and um, you know playing championship games um, so when they've they changed the setup every year, but when I was there, it was you know a couple of tack up games, a couple of div one games, and then we were in the div two champs. So if you could perform, you could play an out one allies game, mm. which was I think it was held on AFL Grand Final day maybe. Um, but other than that, I think the only two people that I can remember is Aaron Hall and Mackenzie Willis getting drafted out of our state league in Tassie. So they've got a good setup now with Tassie being in there under 18s tack cup or i'm not sure what it's called now it's changed the name but in that league full time so you know there's a another pathway there for young kids so you know hopefully more get the opportunity but um back then it was probably only one way to get drafted it was through that seems like they're constantly restructuring things in tasmania it's it's hard isn't it yeah. like it's it's tough it's obviously due to numbers and yeah finances and things like that mm. but hopefully at least this under 18 program will have a good pathway for do you think there'll be there'll be a day that there's an AFL team in Tassie or not? Um, I hate answering this question. Yeah, <laughs> um, but answer it. But I will. Um, <laughs> I'm going to say maybe, but I don't know. I think they've got the um, license to the VFL so, like in the next yeah. couple of years maybe. So it might be that be, be a stepping stone to get one. But if they can get more uh, people to the North Melbourne and Hawthorne games or show a bit of support, then maybe they will. But just keep rocking up to those games. I like this one, Jack. It's from Hannah. It's a very simple question, but I, I just I'm looking forward to the answer. The most annoying teammate, Jay. Mm. I could have almost put money on it. Track. Yep. <laughs> Track. It's double Track. my money. Um, I'm just trying to think. I can I just give us someone there. like tracks thrown up there like every time. Give us someone different. Someone who's, who's annoying. Um. Toby Bevich pretty annoying. <laughs> yeah, nah, true. Fair <laughs> cool. Yeah, nah, fair Bobby play. No, he's, good. he's a good fella. Fair play. <laughs> oh, no. um, Lockie asks, does the MCG scoreboard have your photo yet, Jay? I think I have been unlocked. <laughs> yes, so I was, you have been. Yeah. yeah. I was an unlocked character there for a while. So what was, was it, a, like a... An shot. outline of a black burst, you know, just like, <laughs> no, no, just no like picture, just whatever. an outline. So... Um, yeah, it's pretty cool to be unlocked now. Happy with that. <laughs> big lift. Get yeah. a big lift out of that. Anything else tickle your fancy there, uh, there, Jack? Not particularly. <laughs> Some real positive questions this week, though. It's good. Absolutely. Good to I see. took my feedback on from last week when I said, <laughs> when we got, why are you guys so shit? Um, <laughs> we've almost gone the other way. That is, it's all positive stuff, but we're positive people, so it's good. Um, all right. How much have you bench pressed? Jay? Me? Oh, no, nah, like 90. I'm bad. Uh, you just do the bicep curl. Yeah, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> and the tries, buys and tries. Um, bench, uh, my I got 99 at one rep this year, so that was a bit frightening. Yeah, right. Didn't <laughs> want to go that extra kilo to get the 100? I, I couldn't. I tried. I couldn't. 
What about you? I think that says a lot about your, like more up here <laughs> than it does about the actual. Surely you can will yourself it's to get from 99 to 100. Yeah, it was. It's one kilo. It's my first He's asking year. for more, mate. Cut me a bit of slack, I reckon. More what, about, what about yourself, Jack? Oh, just a lazy 155. Yeah. Um, Three board. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, what's your best lift? It's good. Obviously, it's like bench press. What, like like a mean, squat? Or oh, is it a uh, pull? Is it a shoulder press? Bicep curl? What's your best? You're more cardio, man. <laughs> no, I reckon, no, I reckon bench would be my best. I just haven't done it like for very long. Mm. Like, it's my first year in the doing a gym program, so you should have said something else. Yeah, no, that's well, uh, compared, <laughs> that's compared, compared to everyone else, like I get smashed with the squats. Like people be squatting two hundred and twenty kilos, I can do like one seventy. So um, I probably yeah, all things probably not near the top really. <laughs> good stuff. Hey boys, it's been uh, it's been good. It's been entertaining. We've enjoyed it. The next gen on show, Jack. Um, so this week, Brisbane. Brisbane. Looking forward to the Gabba. Yes. Yep. Now they were, uh, they're they're playing some really good footy at the moment. So, um, yeah, we're coming off a, a fresh win. They're coming off some really strong form. So it's going to be a good clash. Great clash. Boys, thanks for your time. Thank, Thank you. you very much. It's, it's been, a, uh, been a terrific Inside Melbourne debut. Thank you very much. <laughs> very enjoyable. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Jack, thank you. We'll see you next week. Good thank luck. Thank you. And that was Inside Melbourne with Thanks to Zurich. See you next week.